Is he coming, Nancy? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as our honoree is escorted in by the Vietnam veterans and the Patriot Guard. And then please remain standing for our national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Angie as she leads us in our nation's in the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave now please join us in the pledge of allegiance i pledge
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I would now like to invite Pastor Craig Smith to open us up in prayer. It's a great honor to be able to uh, pray for this ceremony and to pray for a friend of over four decades. I think I'm going to have a stand once again. <laughs> Heavenly Father, it is you that's the creator of all things. You have a plan. As I read this morning in Isaiah, you've been about that plan and will not waver from that plan. Nothing escapes your sight. Nothing escapes your ears. Lord, we honor you tonight above all. And then we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would cause provision to be made that we might honor one of your servants, a great and skilled man, very rare with the gifting that personally I don't know of any as a friend that are as skilled as he. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would honor Ralph Irwin, Nancy, his wife. We ask you that you would cover this ceremony. And Lord, I pray that we would remember, as Ralph and I were talking the other day, just to use our time wisely. And not a moment passes that you haven't ordained for us, that you don't have a plan for us to be about. So Lord, we rest in knowing that you control and you are over this ceremony and service and honoring of Ralph Irwin. And we can rest knowing that you are the Lord of his life and he's given his life to you and served you. We now pray, Lord, that you would be honored in everything that we do. It's in Christ's name, the King of Kings, the Lord of glory that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone here and thank you for coming. When I was asked to do this, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to say. So I thought I would just tell the truth. <laughs> I, now some of you are getting ahead of me. Um, I should have known that the Lord had something special in mind when I met Ralph. You see, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, while I've known Ralph for several decades at this point, I actually met him several years before I even moved here. I came here on vacation and was checking out downtown Van Buren, and there he was. And we talked, and he showed me his latest project. And I left thinking, well, now that's an interesting guy. <laughs> but I really didn't think I would ever see him again. Strangely enough, a few years later, I moved here, and I ended up living basically next door to his nephew. And so, through that relationship, 
I got to know Ralph a little better. And then he started coming to church here. And I think a lot of you are aware that Ralph and Nancy lost a son some years ago. And about that time, I lost my father. We were at a prayer retreat up on White Rock Mountain. And we were praying. And I thought that the Lord told me that we were to take that place in each other's lives. And I thought Ralph would think I was crazy when I told him. But he told me that the Lord had told him the same thing. And so Ralph and I have had a father-son relationship ever since. He's been there to advise me, to mentor me, to tell me about those things that I needed to be on the watch for because he had already been down that road. He and his wife, Nancy, introduced me to my wife. And like any good father, he even loaned me his truck for our first date. <laughs> Fortunately for him, that turned out well. <laughs> you might be wondering why I'm telling such a personal story about Ralph and how that applies today. Well, the truth is, it's not a unique story. Ralph has been there to advise and mentor and guide and stand beside every person here at some point in our lives. He has shown us what it means to be a man. He has shown us what it means to be a Christian. He has shown us what it means to be a brother and to be a friend. And every single person here loves him for that. The thing is that Ralph's life has been a life of service for longer than a lot of us here have been alive. He served our community. He has served our church. He served our family. And today, we will be honoring also the fact that he has served our nation. Like always, Ralph has shown the way, and we would all do well to follow his path. At this time, we're going to look at some of his artistic accomplishments. I often tell people that don't know who he is when I start telling them about Ralph. You may not be aware of it but you have seen his work. If you've lived in Fort Smith area for any length of time, you've seen it. And now you'll have an opportunity to realize who the artist was that has brought so much grace and beauty to our community. Ralph Irwin is an artist, and this is his story. He came to Van Buren, Arkansas and opened an art gallery and studio. But wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back up. It really started with Nancy Bush, who became Nancy Irwin when they were married on 24 April 1965 at their church in Los Angeles, California. There was Vietnam to get through in 1967 and 68, where Ralph served as a medic.
God preserved his life. Ralph and Nancy felt the Lord moving them to buy land outside of short Oklahoma. The couple eventually moved to Fort Smith, Arkansas, and they opened Art Form Gallery in Van Buren, Arkansas. In 1982, the movie The Blue and the Gray was filmed in downtown Van Buren. This ignited a spark of creativity in Ralph. He produced a series of sketches during the filming of the movie. His pieces of art were obtained by principals in the film as keepsakes of their time in Arkansas. I first met Ralph in the mid-1980s when we collaborated on a poster commemorating the film Biloxi Blues that was filmed along Main Street using a steam train. Before he opened Art Form Gallery on Van Buren's Main Street, Ralph also worked as a custom jewelry um, artist creating and crafting fine pieces of jewelry at Gold Crafters. Ralph became a Christian in his teenage years, but as a young adult in Van Buren, he found art to be an effective way to express his faith. Many of his early projects show the influence of this Christian faith upon his work. During this time, Ralph began working in the medium he called enamels on paper. This form of art would show up again later in his career. Let us also remember those early days when Ralph drew on paper using Prismacolor pencils. Some of Ralph's early commissions were sculpturally based. It should be mentioned that Ralph's parents moved back to Arkansas after he and Nancy moved their family east. 
I'm sure it was to be close to grandchildren. Ralph stayed busy as his life in art hit full stride. Sand carved murals were large mural projects and he also stayed busy creating bronze sculpture for clients such as St. Edward's Medical Center and the Fort Smith Regional Airport. He did not neglect his painting skills when he created murals for the Choctaw tribe of Oklahoma. A special client through the years has been West Art Community College, now known as the University of Arkansas at Fort Smith. Ralph is adept at bringing art into the commercial space in his creations. Murals have included traditional paintings in heroic sizes, as well as sand-carved murals that bring a sculptural aspect to large landscape work. Artform Gallery, now reformed and renamed as Western Legacy Gallery, has been a place of mentoring, a place for exhibitions, and a studio for the production of art. Sometimes the production was moved next door where there was additional space for work such as the circus wagon children's bed. Sometimes you can even lure an artist out west to Montana's Big Sky on a busman's holiday to create rock columns using lessons learned from his dad who was a stonemason. Ralph learned his lessons well. Sculpture can be very specific to one site. The Nancy Orr Healing Garden at Sparks Regional Medical Center in Fort Smith became an important part of Ralph's collection of work in this area.
Sand-carved murals became a specialty for Ralph. The Grand Canyon Suite is one of his best works. Sometimes the railroad, the Arkansas and Missouri in this case that runs behind the gallery, comes calling to an artist to create and craft a drumhead for the rear of their passenger trains. Ralph and Nancy celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary recently. Over the past few years, Ralph's creative mind has found new use for cast off wooden spools that contained large rolls of paper. Ralph crafts these wooden spools into wonderful polished functional pieces of furniture. Ralph Irwin could have migrated to New York, Santa Fe, or stayed in Los Angeles and been successful in these larger art markets when he returned from Vietnam. Instead, he moved to Western Arkansas and our lives have been richer because of that decision. That decision. At this time, I would like to welcome our mayor, Sandy Sanders, to come up and speak what's on his mind. Well, thank you. I'm sure that just like everybody else here, I have three or 400 Ralph Irwin stories. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that because everyone else would want to then and we'd still be here two weeks from Saturday. To, uh, to hear all the good stories and not counting all the ones we wouldn't tell. Well, when I first met um, late 70s, early 80s, something like that, he looked a lot more like this than he did like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I looked a little different also. Well, it is an honor to be here today. Uh, I do bring a proclamation as well as, for the first time, a second one uh, on behalf of uh, Mayor Freeman from Van Buren who could not be here but he also wanted to uh, extend his regrets for not being here but also certainly wanted to participate. Since I've got two of them I'm going to pick mine first <laughs> and if you want to tell Mayor Freeman that that's okay. Um, by the way JP that was magnificent uh, CD I could have watched that uh, the rest of the, the day. <laughs> well, just like Mayor Freeman, these, these proclamations have a lot of whereases, but I'm not going to read all of them, but I want to talk just a moment about what's in some of them. And we've already seen the ones about uh, the different pieces of art throughout the community and courtyards and buildings, on buildings, in buildings, around buildings, uh, but most of these interest I think that most of us have in his artwork is the appreciation we have of his creativity. Uh, taking, taking a piece of wood, a barn, and uh, forming leaves out of copper and staining the copper and inserting the leaves, so it, you know, things like that. The, uh, how does he come up with that? I don't know and it'll never be me. 
He did serve as a combat medic in, in Vietnam in 67 and 68. Um, there's other things here associated with that particular uh, whereas that I'm not going to reveal at this time. Is that okay? I think Nancy knows what I'm talking about, and we will all know here shortly. Uh, right now, he is fighting the greatest battle of his life, fighting cancer, and he's way ahead, boys and girls. He, um, he's, he's just... He's a force of nature, and uh, I'm, I'm going to bet on him. Uh, his wife of 53 years, Nancy, and, and uh, family have planned this uh, event, and I want to thank all of you for attending. It's, it's great to see all of the uh, folks that are here who love and appreciate Ralph. So on behalf of the citizens of Fort Smith and Sandy and I, it is my honor to proclaim in Fort Smith that today is Ralph Irwin Day. <laughs> And not to be you know, left behind from Air Freeman <laughs> has a proclamation here with a lot of whereases that I won't cover because some of them have already been done, but there's one in particular. Um, Mr. Ralph C. Irwin's art studio and, and gallery has been a longtime treasure, treasure of historic downtown Van Buren, displaying his own amazing and unique work as well as the work of other talented painters, photographers, and craftsmen in various media. So that particularly uh, from, from Mayor Freeman, I think, is significant. But then also uh, from the city of Van Buren, Ralph, today is Ralph C. Irwin Day in Van Buren, Arkansas, as well. Can you get that check? Thank you. At this point, I'd like to read a letter. Hopefully, all the, I'll recognize all the words, unlike earlier when the words national anthem just flew out of my head. <laughs> I think you'll recognize this name at the end. It says, Dear Ralph, as governor of the state of Arkansas, it gives me great honor to recognize your service to our state and our nation. I appreciate the bravery you demonstrated as a medic in the Vietnam War. And I am proud that you have made Arkansas the place you call home. As a Bronze Star recipient, you have shown true heroism in a combat zone and defended your fellow soldiers by designing an underground triage for patients to be safe while receiving medical treatment. Through your ingenuity, United States military members' lives were saved, and the U.S. Army could continue its mission. After the war, you continued to add to your innovation and shared your artistic talents with others, designing murals and unique creations, mentoring young people, and enriching your community and the state. I would like to thank you again for your outstanding military service, which made a significant difference in the lives of others and undoubtedly influenced your future as an Arkansas artist. Sincerely, Asa Hutchinson. And now with a presentation, we have Ms. Kathy Watson representing Senator Bozeman's office. Thank you. It is indeed my honor to be here. And I've, I was familiar with Mr. Irwin as an artist and a big fan of his work from going to his gallery. And so it was this part of his life, his service to our nation, that was unfamiliar to me. So when the, the call came, I was very excited that I would get to be the one uh, to be here today to help honor him. Uh, unfortunately, the senator couldn't come, so I get, I get the honor uh, in this time. But since he could not be here, what he did uh, was had a flag flown uh, in honor of Mr. Irwin uh, over the United States Capitol, and I have that here with me today. 
to present to you, uh, along with the paperwork that goes with that. He also asked me to convey his deepest appreciation for your service to our state and uh, especially to our nation. You served at a time when many Americans did not understand, much less appreciate, the enormous sacrifice of military service. And, and so uh, it's always belated uh, in these, these days, but I don't think it's ever too late to say thank you and how grateful we are for your service. So with the flag, I say that thank you. And this will be yours on, on behalf of the United States Senate and a very grateful nation. Thank you, sir. And now I would like to introduce, representing the United States Army, Lieutenant Colonel Dwight Eikenberry, who has a very special presentation. Good evening, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dwight Eikenberry, Base Operations Manager at Fort Chaffee Joint Maneuver Training Center. It's my honor to be here and take part in this medal presentation ceremony for Mr. Ralph Irwin, a decorated veteran of the Vietnam War. Chip, if we can see those medals. The medals on this device include a Bronze Star awarded just a few months before I was born. Um, <laughs> the Vietnam Service Medal Campaign Ribbon with device, the Combat Medical Badge First Award, the Vietnam Service Medal with four Bronze Stars, and the National Defense Service Medal. And most importantly, a second Bronze Star, which we will now present to Mr. Irwin. For my fellow soldiers and sailors and airmen in the audience, it's customary to uh, please rise to the attention, position of attention when reading a military order. Uh, looks like everybody else is following that cue as well. <laughs> attention to orders. The United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by executive order 24 August 1962 has awarded the Bronze Star Medal to Specialist 5, E5, Ralph C. Irwin, United States Army, for meritorious achievement in ground operations against hostile forces in the Republic of Vietnam from October 1967 to September 1968, given under my hand in the city of Washington this third day of September 1968. Signed, Stanley R. Reason, Secretary of Army. Mr. Irwin, I'm honored to meet you and so happy to see the, the outpouring of love and support and admiration by so many that you've had an impact on your life. Um, as everyone here knows, our, our veterans, uh, they're, they're special to us. Uh, they're very special to the history of this country and our community. All of them have great, unique stories of their, of their wartime experiences. You guys can all please have a seat. 
And I, for one, I'm always interested in, in those, those wartime stories. Um, but what's also, I think, uniquely interesting is the tremendous stories um, that you don't often hear about. What happens to that veteran when they come home? What we normally find is, is they do just like what Ralph's done. They lead a, a tremendous life. Um, they build storybook marriages. And they go on to grow uh, tremendous families at home, at church, and they, they just they touch so many lives through friends and family and relationships. And it, it, it certainly seems that, that, uh, that Mr. Irwin has done that. Um, one of these awards also is the Combat Medic Badge. And, and we, we heard some stories, um, saw some pictures of some of uh, Specialist 5 Irwin's exploits in Vietnam. And as that medic, it's very likely that he saved many lives. We'll never know exactly how many, but there were lives saved because of your service, sir. And, and I, I want to think that many of those veterans came home in 1967 and 1968, and they came to other communities throughout this country. And they did just what Mr. Irwin's done. They came home, and they built those storybook marriages. They served their community. They built meaningful relationships. And they had a positive impact on their friends and their family, just like Ralph has done. And that was made possible, sir, by you and your service to your nation and your fellow soldiers so many years ago. So again, sir, on behalf of the United States Army and, and all those soldiers that, that you served many years ago, thank you. Ralph's been a hero to me for a long time. This is proof that he's also a hero to our nation. I love you. I love you. And I love you. I want to thank everyone again for coming. This outpouring of love and respect means so much to Ralph and his family. You're all important. Every one of you has been touched by Ralph in some way. But I know that I can speak for Ralph when I say that his life has also been touched by every one of you. Thank you for coming. There will be a reception after, and this concludes our ceremony.